I definitely think these raised beds are worth it and we'll get into what I like about them in just a little bit. But first we're gonna talk about the less than idea building instructions that came with these things. Between my dad and I, it took us almost two hours to put one of these together and I think I can do it a lot faster. And just to raise the stakes a little bit, I'm gonna do one by myself and I'm gonna try to get it done in less than a half an hour. So let's get over to the building side of things. So when you get your Yitta Home raised bed, this is the box it's going to come in. Let's see what we got inside. So as you can see, we have our little rubber edge strip protector that goes all the way along the edges of our raised garden bed, just to make sure we're not cutting our little fingers when we're digging around on the inside, caring for our plants. We have our four corner pieces. We have three cross braces that go across the center just to make sure everything stays nice and rigid. And we have our four side pieces and our two end pieces. As well, we have our bag of hardware full of bolts, washers, nuts, some stakes. We have Allen wrenches in here and an open end wrench for our nuts. Not my nuts, the nuts in the bag. And then we also have these instructions. You know, you know what we can do with these? Oh wait, I need the gloves out of here. And they even give us a couple pair of gloves so that way we're not cutting our hands up when we're doing this. Just look at these instructions. There's absolutely no written words on here anywhere. Just a bunch of pictures. Now I'm not opposed to just pictures, but it is kind of nice to have some extra verbiage on there just to let you know that you're doing things the right way. And there's actually some things that these pictures completely miss and with there being no words to tell you what's going on, you don't realize what you should be doing. So it's about one minute after five o'clock right now. So let's see how long this takes. So one of the first things that they don't tell you in the instructions is that there's actually a protective plastic film on the outsides or what would be the outside of your raised bed that you should peel off because it's going to make it a little bit nicer when you start actually joining these pieces of metal together. And if you hear that uh, lovely majestic sound in the background, that would be the annoying sandhill cranes. Sound like a pterodactyl. Now as I peel this plastic protective film off, you'll also realize that I'm not pulling it off the entire sheet of panel. I'm just gonna keep that on so I can keep this protected, but keep this exposed on the end so that way when I overlap my joints, I don't have to have plastic stuck underneath everything. Now the first thing we're gonna do here is fasten our sides together. And you're gonna wanna skip the top hole, the middle hole, and the bottom hole, because those are the holes that we'll be fastening our cross supports through. Just to cheat slightly here, we have a 532nd Allen in a impact wrench, and I will be using the wrench provided in the kit. Oh, it'd be great if the wind would calm down like this. All right, our two side panels are together. So we're gonna put our ends together real quick. And I just wanna note that on our corner pieces to know which is top or bottom here, on one end, we have a solid end cap. On the bottom end, we have a end cap with a hole in the center. And that's where you're gonna put a stake in to keep the raised garden bed in place, I guess. Really, once it's filled with dirt, I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. So you'll notice that at the top of our corners, the hole is closest to the top of the steel and it will be that way for all of the steel sides that connect as well. And the bottom hole is up a little ways from the, the bottom end here, about probably two and a half, three inches or so versus the one that's about an inch down at the top. Now, the first time we put our first one together, we didn't realize that there was this protective film on there. We saw something weird on there, but we didn't realize it was a protective film at the time because all well, the instructions didn't say it, but we had these put to the inside of the raised bed versus the outside. And I'll show you why that makes a difference here. We ended up having to take everything apart and reverse it. So if you put this plastic side facing inward like it is right now, you're going to see that your hole at the top here, the rib is at a peak right now. And when you fasten that into your corner piece there, it's going to flatten that rib out and we really don't wanna do that. So what we wanna do is make sure that we have our plastic side faced out so that way when we line up our holes here, now you can see that this is actually a valley up against the inside corner piece instead of trying to bolt down through the ridge and crush the ridge down. Now I'm pretty sure if I didn't have 90 mile an hour winds swirling around me right now in every direction, I'd probably be done with this project. Now, unlike the side pieces here, we can go all the way down the corner, putting in a bolt in every hole. Remember, bolt, washer, washer, nut. So now that I've got my ends completely assembled, I'm just fastening the sides in between the two ends and then we'll put our braces in. And yes, I had to move to a different location because the gale force winds out here are not helping me assemble anything. So now that I have the two ends attached to one side of the raised garden bed, I'm going ahead and putting in the other side piece right now. And I just quick bolted it together on the one end 
And I'm going to bolt this side together here just to keep everything together so that the wind doesn't keep messing with me much more than it has already. So now that we've got all four of our sides completely fastened to our corners, we're going to go ahead and put our supporting cross braces in. So looking at 10 after six. So it took me an hour and 10 minutes to put this together. You know, I didn't hit my 15 to 30 minute goal, but I will take this as a win that it only took me an hour and 10 minutes to put this together by myself in fairly windy conditions compared to the two hours that it took my dad and I to put one together the first time we tried doing this. So now that we've got our raised beds completely built, we're going to go over some of the things that I like and a few things that I don't like. I love the fact that they have on here a nice rubber edge strip. It protects you from like the unfinished edge right here, which is kind of sharp. You can hear that. The only problem with this strip though is that they didn't provide any sort of an adhesive. There's no adhesive on the back of the strip. So even though I've got this placed over the edge right now, I can very easily pull it right back off. Like this is, that's not going to do much of anything for protecting fingers or staying on. The wind might even be able to catch it and blow it off on the right day. So we're going to show you what we're going to do to try to fix that. I also do like the corners on here though. Uh, the corners on the end caps here are completely closed off. So it just adds a little bit more rigidity to the square or rectangular style raised bed. I've seen some of these where they don't have this top plate. It's just a corner plate bent around. You attach your sides and then this is open, which really doesn't provide a whole lot of structural support. The steel itself is about 30 thousandths of an inch thick. We'll see how well that performs once we start getting this all filled up. They are very large beds, so that is a very good plus if you're growing anything that is deep rooted, like uh, deep rooted vegetables, or if you're growing potatoes, you're going to have lots of room for the potatoes to be able to grow in the ground. However, these could be very costly to fill up as well. So as I was saying before with these strips, I've seen some strips on Amazon where when you open this up inside here, there's actually a double side adhesive that's already on the strip. This one unfortunately has nothing in it. So what we're gonna to do to try to remedy this is we're gonna use some double-sided Gorilla Tape. And I'm gonna to try to cut this down in half because I think that should be more than enough from here over to fold it over the edge and get this rubber to stick on at the same time. So we're gonna put this on all four edges You know, worst case scenario, I can always buy the double-sided edging strip that's on Amazon. I just don't know why they wouldn't provide you with one in this kit. Now, if you get it lined up just right, you can actually roll it on pretty decent. When we pick it up, right by the rubber strip, it's not pulling off. So we are good. That is the solution for that. If you don't like this solution or don't have double-sided tape at home, they do make a rubber edging strip for this type of deal. So yeah, this, this rubber strip, the way we put it on here, that'll work out just fine. It's nice and secure. It's not coming off. I have to say, honestly, for $108, yeah, there's a couple things I could complain about, but for the sheer size of these things and you know how solid they seem, at least at this point, I guess, what more could you ask for? You can easily spend up to $400, $500 on raised beds this size. So I can't complain too much. Now that I've kind of gone over what we like, what I don't like, now we need to find out if they're actually going to perform. So make sure you check out our next video here where we're going to actually fill these raised beds up and we'll see how well they hold up to everything that we put inside.